Hey everybody, how's it going? So this is something that I found to be kind of uh, sad about YouTube recently. So again, they got rid of the dislike counter because you're, in my opinion, you're using it wrong. You are liking videos you are not supposed to like. You are disliking videos you are not supposed to dislike. You have been a bad boy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that away from you so that you can signal to others whether a video is liked or is disliked because God forbid you like or dislike shit you're not supposed to. So one of the things that I found interesting is when I actually went to upload a video from my Android app, I noticed that there's a checkbox over here that says show how many viewers like and dislike this video. They never actually went back and edited this to represent the, I don't know, Nikolai Yezhov approach that they're taking to the dislike button over here. It still says, and dislike this video, even though you cannot see the dislike count. And if you actually go into the YouTube app itself, I mean, just, or if you just browse to it in your web browser, the thing that I noticed is that it's still here. So for that video, when I go edit and I scroll down, it actually is a checkbox that says, show how many viewers like and dislike this video. This is still here, and it still says end dislike, and they haven't changed it. It's been over a month, and they haven't edited this, which just kind of makes me wonder, is that because they are so bad and so stupid that they didn't even know that they should change that? Is that because the person doing it feels like this is a change that's going to be reversed, and they're so confident that they're going to reverse it and go back to the way things are, that it's not worth it to them to find that where end dislike is in the code and just hit delete on it? Is there an internal struggle within? I'm not sure, but I really hope that, th that this actually returns. There are a lot of things that this is useful for besides simply telling if people like or dislike a video. Besides the fact that I want to be able to tell if a tutorial has 10 times as many dislikes as likes before I electrocute myself or do something stupid as a result of what I'm watching on YouTube, one of the things that I like about it is that it actually allows you to find echo chambers. So for instance, there is a video that I did where something I said three and a half years ago or four years ago was factually incorrect. I was going over the Henrik Husby case. I didn't have all the information at the time because I didn't have access to the internal court documents because I'm not, not a judge or a lawyer involved in the case. Once I got access to the court documents, I realized that what I said in my video in early 2018 was factually incorrect in many ways. The fundamental premise of that video was wrong. And that video had an under 1% dislike rate under 1% dislike, even though what I said in that video was wrong. So that told me that this is this really badly needs a correction. Not just one video correction or a blog post, but up to three videos. And I did do three videos refuting what I said in my initial video, explaining why I believed what I believed, why other people probably believed what I believed, why other people probably cheered me on when I did that video, why it was wrong, and why I believe the spirit of what I was saying was correct, even if that particular case was not correct. But still, the facts do need to be correct. It allowed me to recognize that there was an echo chamber. If I could be wrong and I have a 30 or 50% dislike rate, fine. If I can be wrong and get a 1% or under dislike rate, which really means you're in the zone with YouTube, then something seriously effed up there. And it told me that I couldn't just get away with doing one follow-up video. I needed to do a minimum of three follow-up videos going over all this shit to ensure that this uh, very believable plot line is not what people believe is reality once the actual documentation came out. And I really fucking wish that Vice had actually updated their articles to reflect reality too, but that's asking too much. I went over that in a video, How Journalists Lose the Trust of Their Readers, that I'll link down below, unless I forget. It also tells, again, when there are people that are just fundamentally salty about the truth. There are times where I've gotten things 100% correct, where I go over my sources over and over again, and I know it's correct, and oh God, they're fucking honking again. Uh, but the, the, and I know it's correct, and I'll see a 25 or 35% dislike rate. That'll, okay, you're salty. You're salty. You know, I, it, it, I learn things about my audience from not just the comments, but also the dislike rate on these videos. There's a lot that it tells me, and I don't like the fact that it's taken away. And now if you want to find it on any of these videos, again, you can't even see it by clicking on the freaking video as the, as the creator. So I figured maybe it's just it's not going to be available to you, but it'll be available to me. It's not even available to me. Look at all the shit that I have to do to find this. Watch. I have to, I have to click on edit video or it's not in here, so I gotta go to the, I think I have to go to the analytics tab or something like that. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's not, it's not in reach. It's not in reach. You gotta go over to engagement, and then you gotta scroll down, and then it tells you the percentage. And it's like, that's too much work. I mean, a lot of people are just not gonna go through that effort on their own content to find whether or not something is liked or disliked. Like, it's a pain in the ass that you have to hide it behind all this stuff. But I do wonder if the fact that they have not removed it from the internal edit page means that maybe they're planning to bring it back 
or they know that this is not a feature that's going to last very long, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they haven't put that much thought into it, and the management going over this was so stupid that they never thought maybe we should update this to actually reflect the, again, the new Nikolai Yezhoffish Moore reality of YouTube. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. By the way, there's a cat next to me. I don't know if you noticed, but he's stretching because I woke him up since he was sleeping on my wrist. Mr. Clinton? Mr. Clinton? If you meow, I'll give you a greenie. Speak now or forever hold your greenie. No greenie. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.